charge $10 per track if it's found that over 90% of its streams are, let's say, from non-human fans. So Spotify has det detected that the majority of streams on the tracks listed below are artificial. Who is deciding all of these Spotify rules? DIY. DIYers, I told you I was done making content about Opify. Excuse me, Spotify. But then I woke up this morning and something came across my timeline from a very popular producer and YouTuber named Cal Beats. He retweeted a conversation or at least a prompt, a warning that was given to him via distro kid from Spotify about artificial streams. The action that they took because of what they suspected to be artificial streams, whatever that means, was to remove his music off of the platforms. I hate to be the guy that said I told you so, but we talked about this already months and months ago, that there'd be a chance that when these new rules went into place in 2024, they were going to do some shameless, ratchet ass shit. So, Cal Beats got this message. He said, hey, at Spotify for artists, is this a joke? 100% artificial but what about the 100,000 views on the music video? So he's referring to one of the songs, or I'm assuming both of the songs down here, that have 100,000 views on YouTube because he's a very popular YouTuber, yet somehow their systems detected that it's 100% artificial streams? Durr? Then Cal Beats follows this up with a retweet and he hits me up and he says, maybe Curtis is on to something. My dog. As many of you know, I removed my music from streaming two months ago after a combination of videos where we reacted to all of the changes that were occurring with Spotify. Everybody hyper focused on just the threshold system and they kind of waved it off like, oh, that don't affect me. I can get a thousand streams just sleeping. I get a thousand streams. I can get a thousand streams just, just breathing. Look at your dumb ass now. You can have your music go up and from whatever their systems and how whatever, however it's set up, they can snatch your shit down because they say, smells artificial to me. It smell like bacon in this mother. It can do that because it's their platform. I don't know, it smelled broken here. Spotify smelled broke to me. How about we hear it directly from the source? Shout out to Kyle Beats sending me this. I texted him this morning. Here's what he said. Okay, so, got a message from Spotify today. It says, Spotify on DistroKid. So Spotify has det detected that the majority of streams on the tracks listed below are artificial. As a result, your release, here it is right here, I'm reading it. Your release containing those tracks have been removed from streaming services, or from Spotify. They removed it from Spotify. And here's the song, Look What I Started, As I Go Freestyle. Two of like, these are songs that uh, are I've recorded on them. These are not songs I produced for. These are probably the lowest streaming songs that exist that I have. Maybe that's part of the problem with their bots. I don't know, like getting rid of these things. Here's the song. Clearly it's not fake. The music video has 111,000 views. Somebody's gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. What is this system they're using? How can AI strip down my songs and give me stems, but they can't figure out a system for artificial streams? How is it that I can hit up customer support like I did in one of my last videos and tell them, hey, delete my page, and they say, we, we can't do that. We can't do that. How the hell can they not do that, but they can detect artificial streams? 100%? And a man here has over 931,000 subscribers. They're 100% artificial? Like people are going there from my channel. 500 comments. The song had like less than that for streams. The Look What I Started song. And then, um, yeah, it's gone. From my, from my personal Kyle Beats page. Like these are just songs that I make for my own fun. Luckily, I don't r rely on Spotify or else this would be a real issue. It's kind of crazy that, you know, if this was my main thing that I relied on, that they could just remove it instantly without even sending me anything. I, I had to find out by just logging in. I was trying to upload a new song, logging into this or kit. So it's pretty wild stuff, pretty crazy stuff. Insane. Shout out to Kyle Beast for providing that video. I started digging around and doing more research because I couldn't tell if it was a Spotify issue at first or if it was a DistroKid issue since DistroKid is communicating these findings from Spotify in their bot system. Hey, on behalf of DistroKid, they let us know about something. You might want to go check this out. They took your music over there. But I had to do some more digging to see 
Well, what could actually be below the surface of that? And is it all on Spotify? Interesting enough, I found an article here on the Medium that breaks down a few different things on this topic. DistroKid misleading artists by blaming Spotify. Here is the truth. Will Spotify remove your song? Here's the insights from our direct conversation with Spotify. This is in December 20th, 2023. Are you an artist worried about your music being flagged or removed from Spotify due to artificial streams? You might have heard about Spotify's supposed three strike policy from DistroKid. But what's the real story? This article delves into the concerns separating facts from fiction. Debunking the myths about Spotify's policy. One, does Spotify really have a three strike policy against artificial streams and will they remove your music? Answer, DistroKid warns artists about a three strike policy claiming that on your third strike, Spotify will remove your music in accordance with Spotify's guidance. You will be banned from Spotify <laughs> and required to pay Spotify's fine of $10. This statement, however, is false. A direct response from Spotify clarifies, in response, DistroKid chose to present you with this material explaining their three strike policy against artificial streams. Spotify did not produce these materials, nor do we require you to engage with them. Furthermore, Spotify confirms no. This policy is basically followed by DistroKid, and it is entirely their decision to send out strikes to the artists. We never send any strikes and do not have a three strike policy which would remove an artist's music from Spotify. This clear contradiction reveals that the stringent measures DistroKid attributes to Spotify are in fact not imposed or endorsed by the streaming platform itself. It's funny, they're, they're, they're the Spider-Man meme right now. You know why DistroKid is blaming Spotify or they're creating this three strike situation? Because there was a rule, I remember, there was one of the new guidelines from Spotify, what's going to be the changes in 2024. Spotify said they were going to start penalizing the distributors. Uh, I believe 10 bucks per whatever amount of streams, there was some kind of formula that they had. So the distributors, like a distro kid, were going to get penalized. So it seems like, from an outside point of view, I am no longer an affiliate or a sponsor. They are now creating a three strike rule that protects them from having to pay Spotify based upon Spotify's new guidelines. Section two, analyzing DistroKid's roles and claims. Why is DistroKid attributing these strict policies to Spotify? Answer, DistroKid appears to be shifting the blame onto Spotify for their own policies regarding artificial streams. By warning artists that Spotify would delete their music for paid streams, they create a misleading narrative. Interesting that they're throwing DistroKid under the bus, yet they just deleted. I just showed you the video of Kyle Beats, they just deleted his music. That wasn't Distro Kid that deleted his music. That was Spotify. Smell broken here. Section three, the questionable advice to delete and re-upload tracks. Why does Distro Kid advise artists to delete and re-upload tracks flagged for artificial streams? This advice from Distro Kid might stem from a fear of being fined by Spotify. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. These niggas are shady, bro. No, we didn't create the rules, but we will find them if they don't create rules that protect their business. That's crazy. That's crazy. Sometimes the comeback is quieter than the exit. Extended warranty isn't just another album drop. It's the sound of dedication crafted right here in the heart of my home. It's where I rap, produce, mix, master, and even perform shows. It's kind of like my personal Amazon for art directly to you. An extended warranty, every track, especially favorites like I told my wife. I haven't told my wife I want to rap again. Huh. Stand as a chapter of renewal at 39 years of age. This, of course, is my promise to you, this craft, after sharing nine years of knowledge on YouTube. Now I'm channeling all that energy back into music. And as you know, this means no streaming platforms just us and to my supporters this music this vision this success it's alive because of you here's to the art that fuels us the journeys we share and the revolution that is just getting started get your exclusive copy of extended warranty at curtisking.com by encouraging artists to delete and re-upload tracks, DistroKid probably aims to circumvent potential penalties, presenting a solution that seems more beneficial to them than to the artists. They're trying to turn the artists in DistroKid. That's why. That's nasty work. Next question. How does these practices and misinformation impact artists? Artists are caught in a confusing web of misinformation, potentially harming their reputation and financial standing. Because we know that Spotify 
cares about an artist's financial standing. Misleading advice mm, from distro kid can lead to unnecessary panic and misguided actions. Damaging artist relationships with streaming platforms like Spotify. No, you niggas did that on yourself. You did that on your own. Distro kid didn't have to help that. Y'all damaged your own relationship. <laughs> Trying to demonetize over 67% of the, the songs on your platform. You damaged that. Last question, what should artists do instead of relying on DistroKid? Artists should consider switching to distributors who are transparent and artist-centric. You saw the way that Spotify threw DistroKid underneath the bus right now, right? So then I started diving a little bit deeper here on the interwebs, trying to see, are there any other artists that dealt with the same thing that Kyle Beats dealt with? And there were, in fact, some artists and uh, even some content creators who spoke a little bit more about this. Here's one of them. He goes by MMXV11. <laughs> he says in the title, I might get banned from Spotify. I'm not kidding. It's a short video, so let's watch it. So apparently I might get banned off Spotify. I'm not even joking. I woke up this morning to this notification from DistroKid saying that two of my songs have been detected for having artificial streams. Going so far as to say collection, the funk edition has 100% artificial streams which is funny because that's pretty much spotify shooting themselves in the foot if we go under spotify for artists you can see i have 22,100 streams on this song but what playlist am i on good vibes power hour personalized radio beast mode personalized viral hits release radar your daily mix this is my official playlist your top songs of 2023 on repeat discover weekly if we tally up all of those streams from just spotify's official playlist alone that's 10,496 streams which is about 48 percent of all of the streams on this fucking song meaning they're somebody gonna have to tell the truth and i'm gonna i love living in 2024 I love the fact that an artist like this who maybe 20 years ago maybe didn't have a platform to share these kind of things. I maybe didn't have a platform to reshare his video. Y you can't talk without receipts. My man presented the receipts of showing that the majority of his streams indeed came from their very playlists that are hosted on Spotify. So their percentage of saying how much of his music is artificial streams is not adding up unless Spotify themselves allegedly are providing fictitious streams across the board. Well, that would make a lot of sense considering that their CEO is also someone who benefited off of the allegedly who benefited as a CEO of uTorrent when music was being distributed from his software wasn't what the sole purpose of it was. It was file sharing, but who benefited in a company in which music and movies all got distributed on uTorrent using this software. Now that software eventually got sold off to BitTorrent and him and the person that was responsible for coding this said website, uTorrent. Yeah, he hired him over at Spotify when he ended up becoming the co-founder and CEO, but that's neither here nor there. They're feeding me 48% of those fake streams apparently. Good fucking job. Round of applause for Spotify for doing their due diligence. If we take a look at the stream chart on this song, you might see these random spikes, especially one for 7,000 streams. I was suspicious when I saw this too, but I calmed down a little bit when I realized, oh, it's just their, you know, algorithms or editorials or whatever the hell they're doing behind the scenes. But apparently they're all fake. So what can you do? And the exact same thing happened to my song Acid House Edition. It's only at 11,716 streams, but funny enough, all of the editorial algorithm playlists that I was put in are not showing up here under the playlists <laughs> anymore. But if we go under source of streams, you can see Spotify editorial and personalized playlists is on here. And the algorithm is 36% of my total streams, apparently, despite it not even showing 30% of my total streams from algorithmic playlists across all of these. And if I get banned off Spotify, I guess we're doing it the old school way, selling hard copy discs to my fans individually. So well, it sounded like he said that sarcastically, but for someone who's doing it currently right now, let me tell you, you might be surprised at how very little amount of people you would need to do some decent things financially with your music. I just released an album on January 24th called Extended Warranty. And as this tweet here states with receipts, we cleared $1,000 the first day on my new album, Extended Warranty, going direct to consumer. No DSPs, no nerdy ass playlisters, no streams attached, just Bandcamp and my personal website and amazing music. And as you'll see right here, the people showed up for what they deemed amazing music.
and very little units to do that with, right? 57 purchases <laughs> that accounted to clear over $1,000 the first day. I'm not saying it's for everyone, but I'm saying that some of these websites are not going to leave you a choice. There's one last video I want to briefly go into. He gives more of a detailed warning to artists about Spotify and their crackdown on fake streams. Uh, the name of the channel was Manufacturing Viral. Let's listen to it. Spotify screwed over more than 60 million artists. They decided to demonetize millions of songs. And now they say if you use bots, you owe all the money. Indie artists will have no choice but to start using bots. I think it's another hit against indie artists and distributors. Wait, 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 wait. I don't get it. Recently, I made a video talking about how Spotify screwed over more than 60 million artists and how their new royalty payment structure will not stop bot activity. Instead, it will only increase it because indie artists will have no choice but to start using bots to get thousand streams on their songs to qualify for royalties. So let I'm going to say no, indie artists are not going to have to do that because that's not indie art artist business. That's not DIY or business. DIY. That's up and coming business. As a businessman or businesswoman who is in the business of selling music, if you think the only choice you have to compete in streaming is to bot and buy streams, what are you doing? You're not in business. You're playing business. If anything, that will be more of a reason to figure out other ways that your art can be monetized if that is indeed your goal. Some people I'm noticing more and more want clout more than they want to actually make a living off of their music. Who will be affected and how it might impact you as an artist? So here's what's going on. Starting in Q1 of 2024, Spotify is rolling out a new fraud penalty system. First, they decided to demonetize millions of songs. And now they say if you use bots, you owe all the money. So my biggest confusion is why $10? Who came up with this number? Their monthly premium is $9.99, but if people use bots, they will have to pay $10? Okay, let's let it slide for now. $10 it is. Some genius at Spotify. You know what the problem is with that threshold $10? I keep saying it. It's only $10. Yeah, they determined the price, stupid. They decided what the price was to begin with. And then now they're setting up a new threshold based upon that ridiculous pricing of what your stream is worth to them. This fine $10 is cool and you know, people are gonna start botting because they're gonna be worried about 10 bucks. But what are they charging it for? Spotify will charge $10 per track if it's found that over 90% of its streams are, let's say from non-human fans. Wait, 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 I don't get it. So if someone has thousand streams and 89% are bots, this track will be safe? <laughs> These niggas are drunk at the wheel. Who is deciding all of these Spotify rules? I got another one. I got another one. I was doing the math in my head. I was doing the math and I said, um, uh, if you get a thousand streams, but 89% of bots, your track is safe. Who's coming up with this shit? Yet they can throw a distro kid under the bus because they're not as big. They're not a big dog like they are. Disgusting work. They broke and they blaming everybody else. But they will penalize whoever has 90% or more? Come on. This doesn't make any sense at all. So if you're watching, make sure to keep your bot activity below 90%. I'm just kidding, Smart don't man. use bots. Never use bots. It will hurt you in the long run and will completely ruin your algorithm. Personally, I think it's another hit against indie artists and distributors, but it might not be as bad as it seems. Distributors like TuneCore and DistroKid take anything and everything, turning Spotify into a big trash can, piling it up with songs and random noises that no one listens to. So this fines might shift distribution into a more positive and selective environment. Hopefully. At the end of the day, Spotify has to pay royalties even for botted streams. Yeah, they don't want to do that, which is definitely understandable. When a song crosses the 90% threshold of artificial popularity, this means the label, artist or distributor gets the bill. According to Spotify, this targets tracks mostly fueled by bots, keeping most legitimate indie and major label tracks safe. I just have so many questions. Okay, so let's say Spotify determined that the song is botted and they find them $10. Then what? Will the song be taken down? If the song has 1 million streams, it's around $4,000 in royalties. So if the song is bought it, will they take $10 and then they pay the remaining $3,990? Will streams be removed? Is there a way to appeal? I highly doubt that humans will be checking every track to decide if it has bots or not. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna give them one of these too. Ooh. Spotify, you're trash. 
I feel like for legal reasons and also to have the space for flexibility, they're specifically being very vague about these details. So that way, when they spin the block on y'all, when they do all this extra out shit, they can say, well, we kind of gave you a warning by being vague. That means any of this is possible. Disgusting. Because imagine if you did get a million streams the right way. You're expecting your measly little punk ass four thousand dollar check. For all that damn traffic that you generated, for all that time that you kept listeners on the platform, which you're a lot more valuable than $4,000, but I, I digress. Imagine it's not just a one-time $10 fee. Imagine it's $10 per stream over what they consider the threshold. So say they determine, hey, 90% of this is artificial. Could they not take 90% of what the income is for that? Or could they say whatever is above this percentage, we're going to start deducting ten dollars at this frequency that's interesting how they threw distro kid under the, under the bus because of their own vagueness but they're being vague i believe for legal reasons they will most likely be using ai to determine it but ai might be wrong and decide that the song is bought it even if it's not i hope they will allow people to appeal but even if they do it probably won't do much Finding for botted activity is actually a pretty common practice with record labels. Record labels do not bot their songs in any way and keep it very clean. Of course. But sometimes artists or managers would do something shady to make song appear more popular than it is. Or a famous song is added to a botted playlist without anyone's knowledge. I will explain what it means later in the video. So if any suspicious activity is detected, the record label will get fined by the streaming service. Oh, what a tangle web we weave when we conspire to go out and stream. Artists that are relying upon streams, I hope that you are seeing the writing on the wall. Spotify, being one of the biggest platforms for music streaming, is doing a lot of things right now that you should be very concerned about or at least aware of, especially if you're relying upon this being uh, a means of generating income. For those of you that are out here who are going to town for, you going to pound town for Spotify, they're, they're, they're really looking out for the artists, they're artist century. For those of you that are going that crazy in the paint for Spotify, you should be ashamed of yourself because I know that you have to if you have any kind of decency or appreciation for art first of all or for the artists that you work for you should look at this and see how shameful this is the people who seem to be championing and be putting the pom-poms up for streaming never seem to be the artists the true artists who really respect this craft and don't look at it as a lick are people who are directly financially benefiting off of the lie that streaming is the best way for you to make money as an independent artist. Disgusting DIYers. Those are my thoughts though. You let me know what you feel about these. DIYers. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop being greedy. Peace.